Hey, shalom, shalom, mishpokah. Welcome to another edition of Ray Bash's Ramblings. I'm your host, Rabbi Yehuda Ben Shomer, and this is the first part of a three-part series where I'm going to be discussing uh, my recent trip to Nigeria. The blog portion of these videos can be found on either my MySpace blog or my Facebook uh, notes. Uh, so you can go to those profiles and check them out if you'd like. Um, the, you could find the link to my MySpace and Facebook profiles on www.raybashministries.com uh, on my links page. Um, also on my MySpace and Facebook profile, I have uh, created a photo album of my trip to Nigeria. It's uh, The title of the album is Nigeria 2010, and so there I display the pictures that I took uh, while on uh, my missions trip to Nigeria. So each picture has a caption explaining what the picture's about, what I was doing, etc. So please feel free to go by and, and check those out. But this first video I want to just give you a little bit of background on the country of Nigeria and uh, kind of what it's like and to set you up for the uh, future video installments in this series. Uh, Nigeria is a country in West Africa um, on the coast, kind of down in the middle of the the country, kind of like in that little nook where it kind of curves around. It's kind of right in the middle of Africa, um, all the way on the west coast. It is a heavily populated uh, country made up of many states, and it's sometimes called the India of Africa because it is so densely populated. Sometimes it's also referred to as the Japan of Africa because um, there's a lot of technology uh, that's, that, that uh, has been brought into Nigeria. Virtually everyone has cell phones and uh, many people are, are getting into laptops. Um, another way that Nigeria is very similar to uh, Japan and India is virtually everyone has either a bicycle, a moped, a scooter, or a motorcycle. Um, they're just everywhere. Um, you'll probably see more uh, two-wheeled vehicles on the road than you do four-wheel vehicles. Uh, as far as the four-wheel vehicles, they uh, mostly run diesel engines. Uh, so Mercedes-Benz and a lot of uh, European cars are very popular there. But a Mercedes-Benz is not like it is over here, where Mercedes-Benz is a status symbol. Over there, that's their version of the Volkswagen, basically. And uh, the, the cars of, of affluence is BMWs or Jeeps, especially SUVs. So that's kind of how you know you've arrived if, you know, you get one of those. Um, now, Nigeria was formerly under British rule, but once the Nigerians gained independence, they kept a uh, parliamentary style of government. Uh, the, uh, the last economic boom was in the 1970s, and after that, everything's kind of gone downhill. And the government of Nigeria has been rife with corruption due to the oil industry. Uh, a lot of the leaders were making money off the oil, and so that money that should have went to the people and should have went to repair the roads and, and fix up the country and, and create jobs and businesses and, and industries uh, were lining the pockets of many of the leaders and politicians in Nigeria. Uh, so Nigeria is, uh, has a lot of potential. Um, if the government uh, would get their act together, they could have tons of exports such as bananas, peanuts, cucumbers, watermelons, papaya, um, a vegetable that is, that is particular to that area called the garden egg, which would be an exotic kind of vegetable, which tastes like a cross between a cucumber and a green pepper. I'm sure that they would be able to, to sell those in a lot of health food stores and those high-end uh, you know, uh, organic type stores. Uh, so they have a lot more industries besides just oil. Uh, they're also highly into metal works. Uh, everything has walls and gates. Um, so iron gates uh, is, is very popular and prominent, so there's, there's quite a few welders. Uh, the cities um, kind of look a little bit of war-torn, uh, so to speak, where a lot of the buildings are old uh, and are in disrepair. Uh, so there's a lot of um, there's a lot of uh, need to, to fix up the cities, but the cities are, are highly industrious. Um, you know, they're, they're modern cities. Although the electricity isn't always reliable, the power grid is so delicate 
um, a lot of people has purchased generators and that is their supplementary uh, power supply if if the power grid does go down which usually it goes down once or several times during the day so the landlines for the phones are not dependable and once the cell phones have been brought in they just kind of spread like wildfire and everybody pretty much uses a cell phone uh, over there in Nigeria uh, the food is is solely African but it is very spicy so therefore it kind of reminds me of uh, Indian or Pakistani style food um, one of the main dishes is is a wheat dough ball that is dipped uh, in in a spicy fish soup and it's very delicious very good um, the West has greatly influenced Nigeria where a lot of the younger people are wearing things like Ralph Lauren and Giorgio Armani uh, you know the the faded jeans and and the you know t-shirts etc um, among the native dress as well um, there's still a lot of people who wear uh, native African uh, clothing but uh, you could see the, the the influence of the West uh, pirated DVDs are are just rampant there. Um, you can go on just about any street corner, find any DVD you want, but but it's pirated. Um, the roads are in uh, disrepair. There's sections where there's just not potholes but craters. And once cars slow down in these areas, you have young people uh, rushing the cars to sell their goods, selling anything from sunglasses to candy to to uh, bananas, bread, newspapers, belts. Um, uh, handkerchiefs, towels, whatever, um, and this is how some of the young people um, have an income and, and, and make their make their living. Uh, so those are just a few observations, a few things, uh, just to inform you a little bit about Nigeria, about what it's like. The suburbs of the big cities in Nigeria uh, are kind of what you would picture in a third world country where they're just kind of uh, thrown up wooden shacks with tin roofs and a lot of people ha have you know like little small businesses out of those um, uh, you know down down the streets um, and uh, the currency is called a uh, naira and uh, money is 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 a symbol of, of security of power of authority so money is is greatly coveted um, there is a local saying in Nigeria that you can tell if a Nigerian is dead is if you take a naira and wave it under his nose and he doesn't wake up. Um, so, you know, the money kind of fuels fuels the corruption uh, because of the economic uh, desperateness of Nigeria. Uh, kidnappings are prominent, especially of Westerners. Um, they will hold a Westerner for ransom. So there are military and police checkpoints that uh, go for every one to five to ten kilometers. And while I was there, uh, we were constantly pulled over and they would ask, white man, are you okay? <laughs> and uh, so I just reassured them that I was among friends. Uh, and um, But it was it was nice to, to uh, feel protected, to feel like you know they were they were kind of looking out for me everywhere I went I had uh, bodyguards and and a police escort uh, so uh, I felt very safe um, there um, everybody was was really friendly uh, no matter how um, bleak or desperate uh, Nigeria may look at the moment uh, things have uh, are a lot better than they were ten years ago and it seems like things are kind of on the up and up uh, after their president died the vice president took over and his name is Good Luck Jonathan and he is said to be a Pentecostal Christian and uh, the people seem to love him dearly and so 2011 elections are coming up again and many hope that he will be reelected and uh, I hope he will too because I think he can make a really uh, big difference in the country now the population of Nigeria is pretty much split down the middle between Islam and Christianity you have a small minority uh, that uh, sticks to tribal um, religions or other miscellaneous religions and so uh, Messianic and Netzari Judaism would fall into that minority uh, that category now there is a uh, a cult offshoot of Messianic Judaism in Nigeria called Aquatasianism where they are pretty much Messianic except for they still perform sacrifices 
uh, and, and a lot of this is done for profit, done for money. So that is one thing that I had to address and kind of combat when uh, when we were meeting because there would be among the Netzarene there would be Messianics and there would also be those of Aquitasianism. So at the end of a lot of my speaking engagements, there were some uh, healthy debates going on. So uh, I just kind of showed through Torah how you know one cannot be a uh, cannot sacrifice unless you're in Jerusalem at the Temple Mount and you're a descendant of Aaron. So I'm running out of time here. So it looks like I'm going to have a part. Uh, part two to this part one. <laughs> so uh, I'll catch you on the flip side. Shalom, Shavuotov.